So this is how we're starting off today's video, the truth. And the truth is I've outgrown my space and it's time for me to choose me over things that no longer serve me. Hello friends, welcome back to the channel. In case you're new here, my name is Taylor and I am a graphic designer trying to make entrepreneurship, productivity, and self-care feel cozy. In today's video, we are doing my monthly reset routine, including my monthly review system in Notion. I wanted to keep this video super chill, so I won't be doing much talking, but I hope you still enjoy the vibes. You can clean along with me or declutter, get your life together, and I will talk to you once we get to the Notion tour.
All right, everyone, we are here in my Notion setup and we are specifically looking at the monthly review. If you are looking for a more higher level yearly review, including setting your vision and intentions for the year, I highly encourage you to check out my previous video, which I will link somewhere on the screen as well as below in the description, where you will be able to see my detailed process for planning my year on a month by month basis. Let's go ahead and start with the monthly page. So you will see that I have the name of the month as well as the year. This is for search purposes in case I need to see exactly what year this month is associated with. And then I have the date field where I put the date range for this month specifically. And then I have these properties hidden as minimal, which I explained in my yearly review video, but I just think that it is a better look than having all the properties kind of shown at the top. The four other properties you will see as we go down the page, so I will save those for later, but I typically keep them hidden here at the top anyways. Next, we have the theme or the mindset that I wanna have this month. And my word for this month is grace because I wanna give myself grace for everything I didn't accomplish last year. And instead, I wanna focus my energy on moving forward this year in a way that gives me the space and support to rest and recover. And you'll see I also included that word grace here next to the month. Once again, when I'm searching for this month or looking at this month specifically, I will constantly be reminded what my mindset is supposed to be this month. And this helps me when I'm planning on a weekly or daily basis. Below the theme, I have a section for looking back and I'm looking at everything that I completed last month, starting with the baby steps. I have been experimenting with whether or not I wanted to manually input the date range for last month or if I wanted to do something relative like the past month, but then that means that the views wouldn't necessarily be specific to the previous month, so I'm not sure yet and for now we're just using the manually updating date ranges. And then I have a section to review any completed intentions from last month as well. And before I get into my setting intentions process, I like to review my intentions for the year on a monthly basis and see if there's anything that I want to reschedule or if there's something that I want to go ahead and finish up this month that I already had planned for, let's say, two months from now. So I have the name of my intention, the progress, and then the done date. This is actually rolling up from the baby steps database and it's bringing me the latest date and this helps me quickly see when i'm planning to finish a specific intention so for example the safe space i plan to finish that in two months whereas my daria wiki and notion which is a passion project of mine i plan to finish that in eight months so this kind of is another year at a glance but in a more date specific way and then I can always see what baby steps are attached to it here if I want to. The next thing that I do is set my intentions for the month. So I open this toggle and then the first thing you'll see is whatever intentions I had filtered for this year specifically and then whatever baby step will help me get a little bit closer towards finishing that intention. And then below this table view, I actually have a calendar view of the same database. So that way I'm able to see more clearly how many things I'm focusing on per week. I mentioned in my last video that I'd like to just have one baby step per week if possible. I currently have to do these two things this week because I do have this video coming out on Monday and they absolutely need to be done. But in general, I do like to just have one focus and you'll see that here that it just continues only up until the next month because I don't want to get too overwhelmed and then just continue to scroll. So I want to keep it as relative as I possibly can, but also far enough ahead where I can see what is coming up. And then I just have this thing right now for business. I'm pretty sure I'll add more as I figure out how I want to integrate my business reviews into my monthly review process. But for now, I just have a section to review 
the content that I have coming out this month. And that's easy for me to drag and drop things as needed. So that way I don't have too much on my plate. And um, it also helps me plan ahead for if I have videos coming out later, I can kind of go to my Google Calendar and decide when I want to film that or edit or do the voiceovers. After that, I have my review section, which I do at the end of the month. The first thing that I do is look at my rituals, which are my habits, and it is sorted to show my strongest habits at the top and my weakest ones at the bottom. My strongest habit right now is logging my meditations. I have 20 days of that right now, so I am pretty confident that I have created that as a habit. And then my weakest one, I have not logged any days of Bible study or flossing in the morning. So I definitely need to reevaluate if these are habits that I want to continue to do or if there's some kind of way that I can update them in a way that may help me at least uh, log one day of them. And that's another reason why I like having all my habits in their own database because I can see the data like this and if for whatever reason I decide that I don't want to floss in the morning anymore, I can just delete that from my habit tracker altogether and focus on something else and maybe bring it back later once I feel like I've gotten a lot more consistent in my other habits. Then I have a section to review the content that was posted this month and I can just update my view count. This automated checkbox lets me know if I met 10% of my subscribers at that time. So for my yearly review slash plan with me video, I did meet 10% of my subscribers, but for my, I don't know, I guess intro video, I didn't, which is fine because I expected it to go that way. And then when I'm doing my content reviews on a yearly or quarterly basis, I'll be able to go and see which content was performing the strongest and then decide how I want to direct my channel to go in a way that is honoring the content that I want to create, but is also going to meet my audience in a way that interests them. And then I have a section to update my subscribers and watch hours because I am trying to get to YouTube partners. So I just have my current amount of subscribers and watch hours and then what my target is. And then of course I have the progress bars here to add a little bit of visual interest and also some motivation. I have a section to review all the baby steps that were assigned to this month, whether or not I completed them, when I completed them and then how far I've gotten. So for the ones where the target is just one, that just means that it's a single step for the most part. But for example, the organizing OneNote, I have nine sections that I need to organize and I have not put a dent in that at all. So the chances of me getting this done by January 30th are pretty slim, but I would at least like to get started on it and then I'll be able to give it a date that is more realistic with how far I've gotten. And then I have a section called Closing the Loops where I am showing this page in particular as well as all of those properties that were hidden at the very top. And I do this because I wanna make sure that this month's entry is completely filled out and that way my data during my yearly review is the way that it's supposed to be. So I make sure I have my date range, the year, I review my average habits per day, the weeks that were associated with this month. Ideally, I should have at least four, but we're still sort of in the middle of January, so I still have a little bit more to go. Then I have a space to add my average sleep and steps. I'm just checking the Apple Health app that's on my phone and just entering these in manually for now. I may find a way to automate this in the future, but this is working fine. And then there is a prompt for me to go to OneNote and reflect.